Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to try to get a better understanding of MPLS TE metric. The main goal for us is to know how the metrics are calculated for a TE tunnel, whether it's based on the IGP or the TE metrics and how it affects the traffic forwarding. As you see that depending on what type of the forwarding that you have or use on the tunnel, the metric may be calculated a little differently. And we will pay special attention in this lab to the auto route announce method as well as the forwarding adjacency method. And towards the end of the lab, we're also going to look at how we can perform load balancing between IP path and the uh, TE tunnel. Now for our physical lab topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8 and one switch, switch 1. And in this lab, we're still not going to be using the router R8 or switch 1 as part of our routing. And the middle we have a full mesh topology between R2, R3, R4, and R5. They are connected across multiple serial point-to-point -point links. In our last lab, we have introduced a new connection between R1 and R4 across VLAN 14. So in this lab, we still have that. And then the rest of the connections are pretty much happens across the layer 2 VLANs. Now for our layer 3 topology, we have our MPLS core at the middle with the MPLS traffic engineering and LDP enable on all of these links. That's part of the orange circle. And we already have uh, all of our routers configured to run routing protocol ISIS with a flat level 2 with the net ID in this format where X is the router number. And we have configured the traffic engineering support on the routing protocol as well. Now for our test router R6 and R7, we have their leapback 10 through 12 advertised into the ISIS. And those are the subnet we're going to be using as part of our connectivity testing. So let's go ahead and get started with our configuration task number one, tunnel TE metric. So the goal of this particular task is to see the similarities and differences between the IGP and the TE metrics and how the tunnels are utilized those metrics or actually calculated the path based on those metrics. So first we need to create a MPLS TE tunnel one from R2 or R1 to R2 using the following parameters and then make note of the tunnel TE metric. Okay, so the tunnel is gonna have bandwidth of 500K and then an explicit path that goes from R1, R3, and then to R2. So let's bring up the diagram one more time. So basically we're gonna build a very basic tunnel that goes straight from R1 through R3 and then R2. All right, so start with the configuration on R1. We have to build or configure a explicit path. We're gonna name it R3 or R2. So R32 with enable, and then the next top or the first next top or next address for that will be 162.16.0.3, okay, and then follow by a 0.2, which is the loopback 0 of R2. And then we need to create a traffic engineering tunnel using the IP and number loopback 0. Tunnel destination of 162.16.0.2. And then before we can enter anything that's related to the traffic engineering, we need to switch the mode of the tunnel to traffic engineering. And then we can start configuring the tunnel specific parameters. One would be the bandwidth. And we say it would be 500K. So the unit is KBPS, so 500. And then we type that to our explicit path with the path option command one explicit name uh, 32. Okay, so first just want to mention that by default, the traffic engineering tunnel uses the TE or traffic engineering metrics. And if you do a show MPLS traffic eng topology, you will see that as part of the topology information that the router has that contains all the links that's participating in the traffic engineering, it has each of those links has a TE metrics value. And by default, these uh, TE metrics value is equal to the IGP metric. Okay, and since we are running ISIS protocol, by default, the uh, interface IGP metric is 10. So what that means is all of our router interfaces also have a TE metric of 10. Okay, so now if you do a show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel, looks like our tunnel is not quite up yet. So let's double check on the configuration. Here we have a tunnel destination, bandwidth, and the path, so that should be okay. Let's double check on our explicit path. And we have it right there, so that should be fine. Make sure R1 knows about R2. 
loopback zero. And it does. And it looks like I mistyped the name right there. So that should be just R32. So let me kind of fix that. Okay, enable. Next top, run uh, three and then dot two. Okay, so hopefully that will bring up the tunnel. There you go. So tunnel line protocol has changed the state to up. And now if you do show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel one more time, you can see that now we are connected on the signaling. And if you look right here, we're currently using path option number one and the path weight, which is another term for, in this case, a TE metrics for the tunnel is 20. And that is calculated based on the cumulative TE metrics that belongs to the link along the path. So right here, that would be a metrics of 10. And that's another 10. So adding that together, you get the path weight or metrics of 20 for that particular ton. Okay, so that is the default metric calculation behavior of the traffic engineering tunnel. Okay, next we need to reconfigure the tunnel one to use the following parameters and make the note of the tunnel TE metric. So now we're going to have to modify our explicit path. So instead of going directly from R3 to R2, we're going to make a little detour and traverse R5. So now our tunnel should become like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new explicit path. Explicit path, we're going to call this one R352. Next address, 35. Oh, actually, that's wrong. So let me do index 2. Okay, 5, and then 2. Okay, and let's modify our tunnel configuration. Tunnel MPLS traffic path option 1 explicit name R352. Okay, so give it a second for the path to be recalculated. We can try to do a show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel, tunnel 1. So right here, it looks like the signaling was done. And now we have our router R5 in our path. And what we want to make a quick note is right now, the path weight has been changed from what we had before was 20 to 30. And that's because we've added an extra hop into the path. And that's how the metrics is calculated for the tunnel to be 30. But just to make a quick note, We've always been doing a show command, show MPLS traffic and uh, tunnel. But if you add the tunnel number at the end, you get an extra lines of output that actually shows you the shortest possible unconstrained path information. And this tells you that the shortest path to get from the router R1 to R2 is in fact, it's only going to cost the metrics of 20. But just because that we have our path weight of 30, that means we are not taking the shortest path. So it's just a little useful information right here just for you to, to be able to make a comparison as far as whether or not you're currently using the shortest path. Okay, so but no, nevertheless, the, our tunnel path weight went up as we changed the path and add an extra hop to that. What we have to do next is to change the MPLS TE metric on the link from R3 to R5 to 5 and then make note of the change on the tunnel 1 TE metric. So what we're going to do now is, as I mentioned by default, the TE metric of the interface is equal to the IGP metric. What we're going to do now is to manually set the TE metric, or they also call administrative weight, of this particular interface from 10 to 5. Okay, so let me kind of type that in. And that's going to be our router 3 serial 010 interface. So we'll go over to the router 3. 0101 interface and then the command for that is MPLS traffic eng and right here at the top is the first option administrative weight and that's basically our TE metric and we're going to change that to 5. Okay by default it was 10 because it's equal to the IGP ISIS metric and now if you go back to R1 and do show MPLS Traffic engineering tunnel. Actually, let me do a TU1 option. You can see that before we had the weight of 30 and now we are down to 25. Okay, and that's because we modify manually or set manually the 
administrative weight of that particular interface. So we have 10 over here at R1, add 5, then add another 10. That's why it gives you 25. Okay, so that's basically how you can adjust the tunnel metric without touching the IGP metric itself because you are just manipulating the interface metric that only belongs to the TE or ties to the TE metric. And the final subtask is for us to reconfigure MPLS TE tunnel one to use IGP metric. And this is because by default, the tunnel actually used the TE metric. And then we have to make a note of the tunnel TE metric one more time. Okay, so in order for the tunnel to use the IGP metric instead of the TE metric, and that is a tunnel interface command. The command is tunnel and PLS traffic eng. And right here, there is a pass selection option. Question mark, you specify the type of metric that you want the tunnel to use to calculate the path weight. And by default, it's TE, but we want to switch that per our task requirement to IGP. Okay, so you enter. IGP and now if you just show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel tunnel one one more time you can see how the path weight has gone back up from 25 to 30. Okay and that's basically tells the tunnel to completely ignore the TE metrics of the links along the path but instead just utilize the IGP metrics. So that's why we're back to 30 and just ignore the administrative weight of five that we configured previously. Okay, so all that just to basically show you guys how the path weight gets calculated on the MPLS TE tunnel. And to show you the relationship between the TE tunnel to the IGP metric and the interface TE metric. And that should complete our task number one.